we be honest, long off like now, like, and he's he, he's annoying, and he be, and you know what, he be getting a nuisance now. He get on people's nerves now, right? And uh, <coughs> I go up now, I think you're a bit of a drinker, Mike. You come on, let's have a glass of red. Yeah, when I go, so what I done, I uh, had half a sleeping towel, he crushed it and put it in his glass of red, see. And I shoved mine down me like this, and he went like, yeah, he lost the weight to drink. Oh, well, I'm at, want another one then? Yeah, yeah. Well, you want to go now? Well, let do the same again now. Right? <laughs> well, ten minutes later, now he'd be standing at the bar now. Honestly, I've never seen this before. He'd be leaning against the bar, sleeping. <laughs> 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 and the. Alan, how are you doing, boss? Oh, excellent. Mate. Yes. <laughs> As you can see, we're the centre. I was going to say, but how's the holiday? Oh, it was fabulous. Fabulous. A month in, uh, I done house swap. Uh, <laughs> house swap? House swap, yeah. A friend of mine came, he's too hot in Portugal in August for me, come and stayed in with Carl, and I went, stayed in his, uh, his apartment in Quinta de Lago, Portugal. Lovely, mate. What was the temperature there? Oh, 30, 31 every day. 27 days of un- uninterrupted. Wow. Sounds fabulous. Do you like the switch off? Well, I do now, yeah. I've retired now, two, three years, yeah. yeah. Well, I still like to keep busy, man. And yeah. This is why uh, uh, I'm happy to do the interview with you today because I'm up in the Sandville, which is a, yeah. a local hospice charity. Uh, uh, and it's great to come up here and see people and, and give something back. That's why, right, Well, we can talk a lot about Sandville, everything you've done. And, you know, talk about your career, team manager for Wales. You've done amazing things. What is it that, you know, keeps you ticking on? Keep ticking on? Well, <laughs> enjoying enjoying life, innit? You know, i got four grandchildren. Now all under nine. They'll keep you going. As, uh, anybody will tell you we've got grandchildren. Mm. And, uh, yeah, you know, life has been great to me, to be fair. So I'm just trying to give something back and enjoy life. I like to try and keep fit. Mm. Because uh, that's been in me all my life about training and uh, and just enjoying things. That's the way. That's the way. Well, I'm very grateful for this opportunity today to interview. Interview. Obviously, your history, everything you've done. It's pretty powerful when you go to a coffee shop and get to know someone over and over. You uh, get connections. So shout out to Paul for uh, for sorting this out and connecting me with you. Well, um, you, with yourself, mate. Like from 1979 to 1992, you played for Cardiff, and I looked at. I looked, I was impressed with the appearances, 481 appearances. But I'm more impressed with the tries. <laughs> 162 tries as a hooker, mate. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I've had some stick of that, believe it or not, <laughs> over the years. But uh, I just say to people, well, I, um, I scored 153 or tries, whatever it was, but I made 280 uh, with offloads and passing and different things. And... Uh, I claim to fame in all them seasons, I only made 10 tackles. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different game. And listen, I, I happened to come around at a time I was pretty fast and fit. And the game was a lot slower then. And then uh, when I started to come on the scene, it changed. You know? mm. The pace of the game picked up, people were getting fitter, you know. And uh, so it suited my style of rugby, really. Yeah. You, you mentioned just before we started this, you know, how you got selected to go to Cardiff. Because most people from Kenfigil, our area, you'd probably go to Bridgend. Well, uh, believe it or not, uh, a fair, you know, when I was with Canal Youth, we had a hell of a team in 1970, 71, 72. And we were shoot caps, school, secondary school boy caps, boys club, the wheel caps, we were a team and that. And uh, at that time, and for years later, uh, Bridgend, you used to have a Bridgend Sevens, and it was a big day, mm. you know, a really big day, you know, big crowds, great day out. And we went and played Canel Youth on a Tuesday, you saw preliminary games, qualifying games for the Saturday. And we got through to the final on the Saturday, playing unbeaten Clenetley Youth. And they were the top youth team in Wales at the time. And we absolutely stuffed them uh, on the Saturday. And we played between, after the semis, the men's semis and the men's final, we played. And it was unbelievable, a big crowd there, you know, all, everybody from Canby Gale Club and the local people there. And uh, we, we, we ran away with it. And... Uh, I remember I, I'd been down to train with Abraham because I was Abraham District, he was mm. captain. And then Morton, I was on, on all stage there. He's been there for donkey's years and there was no joy there. But Jen, uh, you know, 
uh, always a great team, great friend. I was here, Jeff Davis. Uh, he, he, was, he was an handful, Jeff, good player. So there's nowhere for me to go. I thought, oh, I'll go back and play for Ken Miguel. Now the season's over, we won this. Uh, and then on the Monday, I trained with Ken Miguel. I was coming home, I lived in Pyle. I was walking down Cotland Road and uh, the guy turns up in a Morris Mine and said, excuse me, do you know where Alan Phillips lives? I said, he goes, just down the road there, turn left. And I've been to Glasgow Square, number 10, Glasgow. Oh, you know where he lives? Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, he said, give me a lift, I'll take you to the house. <laughs> and when he just pulled up outside the house and the light, there was a light on, he looked at me and he said, it's you, you bugger, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I reminded him this for years and years and years because he was Gary Davis, Lucky Davis, Pen code by, yeah, played yeah. for Cardiff for years. Uh, a great place for Cardiff, Gary was. And uh, then that was it. Off I went to Cardiff. Wow. And uh, the rest of this is history. It was hard, you know, it was great. Uh, it was a hard start. I thought that first season I was playing a lot for the Rags, Cardiff Rags, but you had ex international stepping down and, and looking after you. But uh, it was tough times, and I thought, I, I don't think I can manage this. Because mm. going from youth rugby to men rugby, oh, it's massive. Especially as a forward as well. It's, you know... Front row forward, yeah. But I was lucky. We had props in them stepping yeah. down from the first team. You know, not many teams, like without scrimmage, Cardiff Rags mm. in them days, it was upset really. So that gave me time to strengthen up a bit and mature a bit. And uh, my first season, I think I played two games against Glamorgan Wanderers and two games against Panas. Mm. And uh, that was it. And it gave me the taste. And uh, the rest, as I say... This was history, so oh, I think. Oh, it was, it was a won wonderful times playing for them. We had some great times, great teams, and won six or seven swept cups at the end. And yeah, it was just just unbelievable. It's impressive, really impressive. And and considering those days as well, obviously the t the game has changed so much now. But for you to be such a mobile hooker, like you know, it sounds like your type of game was speed as well. You know, yeah, yeah, I was lucky. I had speed, and uh, you know, um, to throw a ball in the line out. You know, and, and mm -hmm. what helps when you're playing with good players, you know, playing with good players makes you a better player. Yeah, yeah. And the standards are raised. Some some of these, you know, players, they, they demand high standards of fitness. Like some of these boys, men's like Terry Holmes, we mm. trained and some of these boys that can name hundreds of them. But, you know, and that drove you on. And when I was very lucky, I, obviously I lived in Kenby Gale and we had the rest bay, we had the beaches here in Scare and the sand dunes. I wouldn't go training in Cardiff in the summer until second week of August because I'd be down here because this was the best training ground a lot. You had Merthyn yeah. Mowry, Magen, all the Magen boys, the Big Dipper, we ran up yeah. that. And that was a test of character. See how many times you could run up that. You, you would test your fitness in them days. How many times could you get up the Big Dipper in yeah. a session? Like? Yeah, it's a tough old... Tough old well, game. all the Olympic boys, a lot of people use use Merthyn Mowry like in them days. You couldn't get better training grounds. And once you'd done all that, when you went to Cardiff then, like in the summer, you know, running on, on grass pitches was easy. It's fine, yeah, because you've just taken about, your legs have just been on it, like as if you put another 30 kilos on uh, it. Yeah, well, well, we did, you know, you, you, you'd you run across, uh, I'd actually run from Kenby Gill in them days down to Kenby Car Park, meet up with some of the boys and we go across to the beach mm. and then we do our sprint training on the beach or we do soft sand dunes and then you know, after a couple of weeks go to sprinting and then we had a sprinting coach. We had a sprinting in the water, you know, going wow. in like a foot and a half. You lift your knees mm. and doing 20, 30 yard sprints, you know, things like that. And we, you know, we just done it naturally. We didn't yeah. really like scientific now. The science behind it all. Oh, yeah. Now, today, when the boys train now, they won't run further than 1,500 meters now. Because that's what the data is telling it's them. It's all on. speed now. It's all speed. Yeah, yeah. Quick, quick, repetitive speed, 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 you know. Like, and that's the way it is. Yeah, uh, well, I, I live in Puthcourt now, and I've noticed I'll go from a run down to Coney over the front if the tide's out, and you can run all the way around to the dipper, end of the dipper, then come, uh, no, sand dooms, and then come back. You know, it's a good old slog on that sand all the way around. Well, there. yeah, I, I, and the other things we used to do as well, like uh, we'd be training, and then, uh, then we'd have a swim after. Mm. So we were actually were doing recovery. <laughs> we were doing recovery work without knowing we were doing recovery work. Mm. <laughs> you know, and things like this. And sometimes you go down, uh, obs or often if I had recovering from an ankle injury or something, I'd be down the beach, the, uh, down the scare in the cold water. Yeah. Or, or there was uh, uh, cold springs in Etchins Point with Carl, where you could go there and you, you, so you, you could, it's like quicksand there, you put your ankle in there. And it was unbearable pain you were in. But you know what? It cured the illness pretty quickly. Mm. Well, the inflammation out and whatever. We, but 
we were just told to do this. We didn't really know scientifically. No, you were just do doing it just because of what the benefits, or you that, just that, noticed yeah. the hard work from it. Or credit to you, man. So, you know, we we were talking about it just before um, going back from from Cardiff, and then kind of coming to the end of the end of your career. I know you come late to a tour, a Welsh tour. Is that right? You went to South Africa, was it? Was it no, South? Uh, or was it? Uh, Back at you about 32, I believe, I've seen that you Yeah, went. I got called out to New Zealand, the first World Cup. I know I've skipped Cup. a bit of a chunk of your Welsh career, but... I don't worry about it. Uh, uh, there's nothing much to show about with that anyway. But uh, uh, I uh, I got called out to the 87 World Cup. Uh, it's ironic, really. I was captain of Cardiff that year, and uh, we had a bit of a team, and we were going. We The following day, I had a phone call on a Friday night. I was in Gigi's nightclub with Cole and my <laughs> wife, and... Uh, my uh, mother-in-law was babysitting, and uh, I was due to go to the Benidorm on the Saturday with Cardiff for a week. Benidorm, uh, we we saved up this massive kit here, ten or fifteen thousand. The boys it was, it was just a bit of a knees up for a week, and after you know another good year we had. And uh, I had a phone call on a Friday night. My mother-in-law and the owner come and saw me. Peter Morgan said, "You need to go home. You need to get home." There's phone calls for you from New Zealand. So I, was just, oh, I thought you were pulling my leg. No, no. Ray Williams is ringing you back in half an hour. You need to go home. Well, I went home and Ray rang me and he just told me that Billy James got injured. We're flying you out to New Zealand tomorrow. Oh, my, my, I'm 34 at the time. Like, I've given up all this type of stuff. I thought my jaw dropped. I said, well, we've got that 10, 15,000 kitty on the boys. <laughs> all our tracksuits from uh, Peacocks and all uh, ski from Peacocks in Cardiff, Bob Peacock, God rest him. And, um, uh, off I went, and long all flight out there took us twenty eight hours to get out there. I know, listen, it was great. I enjoyed because yeah. I played for my country again, and uh, we uh, we beat Australia in a third place playoff, which was a highlight for me really. And beat in England in Brisbane, mm. and then the All Blacks. Uh, the All Blacks. Well, I didn't. I wasn't hundred percent fit for the All Blacks game, and uh, so I sat on the bench. And uh, well, I saw something that day. I just went, these. And we were out there, and all this, you know, you got the sign this thing, be screaming when you got out there, you, you know, you know, you know, not to professionalize yourself. But mm. well, the All Blacks were doing all these TV intervals, you know, Air New yeah. Zealand tractors, you name it. They were all, well, they weren't doing that for nothing, like. no, again, but they you. were professional. Mm. They knew what it was all about. They'd been preparing for that World Cup. Out of all the World Cups since, uh, that's the easiest I've ever seen a team win a World Cup. Really. They were way ahead of everybody in France in the final as well. They were just way ahead. What what year was that? 87. 87. It was the first World Cup, right? And uh, they were way ahead. And I remember coming home now and Tony Gray saying to me, well, we, 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 you know, you've done great for us with the experience and helping Dick with the captaincy and different things. We, 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 we want you to be around next year, but you're going to have to train like a professional. Well, uh, I had uh, Small children and a job, mm. and I said, "I'm oh, going to do that. Train nine times a week." But you couldn't think, "How can you train nine times a week?" Mm. But now it's normal when the Wales boy is in the Welsh camp. You'll train nine times in a week. You train three times in one day. Mm. And he, I said, "No, that won't be for me." Sorry, Tony, you went up there. Crack on. Well, obviously, at that age of your life is what your body's not re- recovering as quick as it was. Well, you're slowing down. I, I noticed my legs slowing down. You know, uh, you, 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 I used to time these runs. I used to go on, you know, fif, you know, fifteen minutes, and go go flat out. And them runs now were taking me seventeen minutes. Mm. It tells you, that tells you your legs are going, and you, you 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 can't avoid that. It happens to everybody. If you stay around long enough, yeah, and you're injury free, your legs will go. Yeah, definitely, I agree with you. There. I had, I've had three knee reconstructions, ACLs, in this knee, and. Um, yeah, I was never fast, but they definitely yeah, well, slowed you're down. definitely a lot slower now, that's <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's for sure. that's for sure. Um, we've missed it out, but Thumper, the name? Oh, just a family name. My brother was called Thump. So it wasn't for throwing hands? No. I'd like to, I, I tell people that, like, just to show off, but oh. no. Um, it was just, he was Thump. I was Thumper. My, 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 my son now is uh, Thump. Mm. Um. My grandson, the oldest one, I call him Young Thump. <laughs> and you know what? He's uh, nine, nine, his name is, and uh, I'm absolutely over the moon. Ten, he's coming up to. He's just made the Bridgend and 11 squad, so mm. uh, he loves it. He loves the game. 
you know, in the mornings when he stays with us, you know, he's yeah. Googling this, on Don Dupont, and wow. it's actually, well, great things, because uh, I don't do much of that, I don't look back mm. really, but he's played all the Grand Slams some days now when he's stayed with us, and I've watched all the Grand Slams we've won over the last 10, 15 years, the great game, he, in Ballison, he showed me video, uh, one of the games when I had my first cap, and I realised how, how slow we were, <laughs> we didn't, compared to the today's game, you know. Mm. But he just loves it, and uh, that's so nice to see, though, because <laughs> I don't know if much youngsters coming through now are as, as invested as that now. But they've got so many other options of iPads, computers, and things like that. Like I don't know about you, well, growing up, if you left the house, the rugby ball we, we would be in my hand. The rugby ball would go everywhere with me. Like you do a pass with your mates, you do this, and I just I might be wrong, but I just don't uh, know no, if that's yeah, I, I, I you know not. Uh, I'd be inclined to agree with you a couple of years ago, this, you know, but because uh, my grandson is in, my two grandsons are in the call junior section, can we get the junior section, uh, got a hell of a junior section up there, and uh, the people up there work tirelessly for the clubs, fantastic. But call is coming nicely. I can watch these games now, right? Uh, the boys playing, the gen athletic, mm. the teams down there. There's plenty of talent out there. Yeah. I've seen it, you know, and... I know there's only 10, right? Some are 9 or 10, but you can see it in them. Some of them are just naturally yeah. quick. You know, that's not training. No, I think they're just quick, got a fast twitch. And I've seen some players now at 10 and gone, wow, if he don't make it, nothing will like, you know. Yeah. And uh, so there's, the talent is you, and the boys who want to play rugby will play rugby. Of course, yeah. And as long as, like, you know, Wales is a small country, as long as we nurture these boys through and don't push them too hard too soon, You'll be fine. Yeah. It's identifying that talent at a young age and not over pushing it really. And it, there's plenty out there. And I, I, I've been buoyed by this the last two years. Seeing, I've even seen some of these, uh, the, some of the girls playing, right? I mm. saw a girl play uh, under eights this year. I thought, if I shut my eyes and look, I thought it was Shane Williams. Wow. She was unbelievable. She tore Regen up the call under eights, the bits. And everybody was just clapping her. Mm. What team was she playing for? Uh, well, uh, team from Don West. It was like I can't remember the name of the team now, but uh, she was uh, she was incredible, and uh, I was laughing every time she she was skinning the boys right, and the the boys were putting their hands on their heads and shaking, and going, getting losing their tempers, you know. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't catch her like fair play. Oh, it's, it's good to see. It's good to see the women's game growing as well as. Oh yeah, yeah, it, well. yeah, yeah. It takes, you know, a lot of people. You know, like there's a lot of this stuff going on at the moment with the women's game. The women's games. Will improve every year, but it mm. takes time. Yeah. A lot of people are pushing hard at it now because the, the society we're in at the moment, they want it to be right overnight. Well, it's not going to be right overnight. Yeah. It takes years. It takes years to get it right. Uh, and ingrained in fitness and one thing or another, you know. And I remember I, I was a bit poo poo in women's rugby a couple of years, a couple, two, a couple of years ago. Not being disrespectful, but uh, the, the, and mm. I thought the good thing was you got girls out there training now. To get fit, any any sport, like whether it's football, whatever, I like to see young people playing sport because it's, it's great for mixing with people and managing uh, people and being involved with people. And if mm. you become, if you play in a sporting team for ten years, you got friends for life in that Definitely. team. Whether it's football, cricket, rugby, and rugby for me is the one sport that teaches people respect, yeah. respect the referee, respect your opposition, you know, and uh, and discipline. Being part of a team, and you know, later on in life, whether you finish rugby at eighteen, nineteen, you go into work, and you work in teams in work. You become a team member. Life is about being team members, mm. unless you're an athlete or individual sports or a jockey. You know, yeah. But generally, rugby is great for that. You know, and uh, and that's uh, I. I just think rugby. You see, when the kids play rugby, it's different, mm. different to any other sport. The respect. That you have, even originally for the opposition, and sometimes they're too good for you, and that's yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. I think rugby's taught me more than anything in life resilience as well, getting through a hardship. You know, well, it's a tough game, it, you know, and he's even tougher now. Yeah, because I, I, when I go and watch Kami Gill play, which I don't watch a lot uh, in the last couple of years, but if I go and watch him play, I see how them boys are getting stuck in and putting their body on the line, and they're amateur rugby players, like, but they love it. Yeah, you'll do a lot for your. 
you know, especially that level, you if you're from the town or from a village or from the and you buy in, you'll do a lot for that town or village because it means so much to a lot of people, you know? Oh, well, it is. And, uh, you know, every week, that's my brother, because he's up there, he's been every, he's stalwart Kemi Gill, and uh, he's been unbelievable for him. How do get, the boys get on Saturday? And sometimes they'll go up, sometimes they'll be done. But, like, he, you know, every week, how do they get on? Uh, Clive Williams, a friend of mine from Corn, played two British line shows, Clive, but call. every week, how do they call get on? Yeah, well. You know, like, because uh, I live in Pitcall and I, I know a lot of the Pitcall people. And, uh, you know, it's it's an interest you, you just don't get away from. Mm. Yeah, I yeah, totally agree with you. Now, one thing I've I've already picked up from you is, mate, you, you, you're quite charismatic, confident. And um, like we talked about earlier, you know, you're very, you seem, I can tell already, you, you're definitely good with people. That's probably one of your natural talents is people. How does someone get into a role, Al, of... Coming a team manager for Wales, I know you said you had a, you, you had a sales sales background before that working, but how did the opportunity come across? How did it yeah venture? Well, it was a it was a guy Les Williams from uh, down west there, and uh, he was a lovely lovely man, and uh, he kept on to me. You need we need young men on the committee, and I never saw myself as a committee man on the WIU ever, but he kept on and on and on, right? And I thought right, it's okay. I uh, went to become a district, right? I sent letters on all the clubs, and, and I go voted on, believe it or not. I, and I was as amazed as anybody. So I was on the committee, and then I've been on it for about 18 months. You know, and I was asked whether I managed the A team. And, you look at my, and, that, and that was it. Mm. I, I started there uh, and uh, interviewed with Terry Cobner. Dennis John was the coach, and, uh, Lee, Lee, and uh, Lee Jones. And uh, I said, Well, I'd only do it if. We uh, the the eighteen B team is flip back mm. and forth. Is that if we? Uh, it's not about winning. It's about developing young Welsh players to step up to a national game. Yeah. Because you had your Bridgens, Cardiff, so on, and only that level. But you like to think if you're stepping up now and the boys are playing against France B over in France, that's, that's a bloody tough place to go. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's where you can judge them. You know, right? Really. And we, the, we agreed. It's not about winning. So the coaches were happy with that. Because what you didn't want is the coaches picking players they knew, mm. 30, 35. So, although you need a couple of them, boys in the team for experience and toughness. And that's where we went. And uh, the first year, we won every game. Wow. Uh, the, the Six Nations. Second year, we done really well as well. And um, then Gray Manny was on board. And then uh, and it's, you know, we, we've sent up some good youngsters to him, you know. And I was championing them boys. I'd, I'd go and see um, Gray Manny. I said, so-and-so, he's so, ready, so, he's ready, he's ready. ready. And they, they say, how oh, do you know he's ready? Well, how oh, do you know he's not ready? Mm. We'd have these discussions, you know. But I was with him, and I could see him. You know, they had the attitude and one thing or another. And, uh, and after that, uh, he came and asked me, would I uh, do the national team? Well, I had a good job then, right? Earning good dough. Everything was going great in life, you know. Nice car and work. And I said, oh, I don't know about this. Mm. And uh, eventually, uh, he said, no, you, you've got to come work with us, so... I did it uh, originally, you know, and then it developed from there. Well, after three or four months, he, uh, he, he under his notice, and he went back to New Zealand. And Steve Hansen had come over, mm. and I, I remember Steve from Canterbury. He's a great guy, great guy, Steve. And um, next thing, he said, "I need you," and I was it. I give up my job, and I said, "No." Oh. My wife said to me, "To be fair to her, if you don't do it, you'll regret it. Yeah, you got to go and do it. Give it a go." And I did. And what do we do? I think we lost. Uh, them games on the trot. Steve Hans. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, And I remember I was up in <laughs> London uh, uh, six weeks ago with him. And, uh, I, you know, he's won two World Cups. He's won everything. He's been a great coach, you know. And uh, mm. I said to him, I had to remind him that you've got the worst record. <laughs> you've got the worst record, I said, in coaching history and was most consecutive defeats. What was his response to that? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's unprintable, really. But <laughs> he's great. And he knows that as well. But he actually said... That was a great grounding for him. Yeah. Because, you know, um, you know, he that team was improving all the time. Mm. And well, oh, he went, and the following year we won the Grand Slam. Yeah. Under Mike Ruddock. That's right. Now, that team had been prepared by him. Mm. There's no doubt about that, right? And the coaches, Scott Johnson, and these boys. Like, and uh, it was it was great, and the boys loved him. Mm. And, you know, even to this day, you know, right, he still talks about Gareth Thomas... Is one of the fittest rugby players and the hardest working rugby players he's ever dealt with. And he's dealt with all these all blacks, you know. Steve Hansen said that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, he, he's talked. And 
Gareth, you know, could be a bit. You know, Gareth is Gareth, like in his character, like, and you could see when he blah blah blah, and he, he get a bit emotional about stuff and different things, you know, with Gen boys. And uh, I always used to have a laugh with the Gen boys because <laughs> I, I always said they were all different. The Gen boys were, yeah. and some character, some. There's some boots I have to say I'm dead with from there, right? <laughs> I'm from a gen, so be I know. <laughs> and I said, I'm sure I said, you know, they still they got lead pipes in the gen. There must be these boys are drinking water coming through lead pipes because they're all a bit <laughs> clean off. <laughs> and they used to laugh. No, you're not. I said, You're from Kenvy Gill. I said, Well, I know you got copper pipes up there. I said, well, <laughs> but you got lead pipes in the gen, and we used to have this banter with them, you know. Yeah. And uh, but he he still to this day, he, even uh, six weeks ago. Speaks very highly of uh, Gala. How he changed his life round, really, from where he was. You know, yeah. I, you know the boys used to walk in the town and drink too much, and he transformed himself. And he came back, and he's a different man, mm. different man. Like amazing. I, I, and you know what? He said it as he was, Alf. I think that's the bit. And you're going to rub some like, people. I like players like that. Yeah, yeah. I like players who express themselves. Yeah. Like the ones who went round the corner, whinging and yeah. and putting a knife in to people. You know, you know when you talk about, uh, like, Are we on again now. Yeah, we're on now, mate. You know how you talk about, you know, for instance, you know, Graham Henry, Steve Hansen. You're coming into this fold. You've gone full time now. Was it? You know, there's so many people out there that have that, you know, that the word imposter syndrome. Shit, I'm not meant to be. I know. Am I meant to be doing this? And we spoke about it off air. You could learn it on the run. A lot of it, you know. And you're a confident guy dealing with people. People, was it like ev- you have those moments going shit? Am I meant to be doing this, or was it always like, as long as I just put one foot in front of the other, I'll be fine? You, yeah. Um, well, and there's no doubt about it. Like in life, you learn more from uh, you know your mistakes and uh, your setbacks than you do about winning. You know, yeah. you can win, 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 and sometimes winning hides things. Yeah, and uh, you know hides weaknesses and different things until you come up against somebody really good and they they find you out. Like you know. Um, and you learn, you learn on the job. You know, I remember one day uh, this bus company we had, and uh, you know, you go back, you go back in that time there now, right? Um, we didn't have a pot yeah. to wee in, right? We had nothing, and we had, we had to go with no money. We had to go looking, and we, I went, a great guy, Bernard Jones, by his view now, right? Uh, with Ponty, and uh, he was a great man, great, great man. You and I loved his rugby, and I remember bumping into him one day and saying, I was going, anything I can do to help you, uh, Alan? Well, we haven't got a proper gym. Uh, uh, we, you know, we in them days, we had to get on a bus at the Vale and drive into Sophia Gardens. We rented a rugby field there for 25k a year. We'd use their gym. We'd have a gym. Next thing you know, Bernard, what do you want? Bum, bum, put a gym in. And we decorated this room out. I put a gym in, built a barn. Um... Uh, Graham and the Graham, to be fair, and David Pickering, and uh, that was down to the Leak family, Gerald Leak, Stephen Leak. They were great supporters, and they mm. still are great supporters. You know, when you when you look back on it, you know we've got the best training facility in the world, Wales, yeah, and still have, yeah. Uh, you know, and he's a couple of quid spent on it again now, doing it up a bit, but we always had that, and we, you know, I thought right, once we get to this, and Bernard, and we had other people helping us out, Chris Hopkins. You know, uh, Ted Hopkins tractors, he supplied stuff for this. And we had Brian Castle Owl down in West Wales was, was mm. sending food up to us. Amazing. And we weren't paying for it. Wow. But, you know, and Brian has been a great support over the years. All these all these people, people don't know about, you know, we had nothing, right? And uh, it developed then. And once the team started to be successful, and this is what success brings, you see, it brings more money, right? Mm. So we, we, we started developing more of the veil. Better pitches, uh, new gym, and I mean, last going off, we spent like three quarters of a million on a gym. Wow, it's a massive gym. They got the best gym in world rugby for rugby teams now. So I always felt, and the pleasing thing for me was, we keep improving. Obviously, the players kept coming in. They said, "Well, come on, they're not standing still. Mm. They're not standing still." You know, and these are things you learned. I remember going over to Australia, you know, to do a recce, and uh, there was a guy there, and. Uh, I said to him, any chance of coming to watch Australia train and see your facilities? And uh, Brendan, and, I, and he said, yeah. And they showed me around everything. Then I went to New Zealand and saw what they had. Wow. And it's in the early days now. We were doing reckeys. I always used to go to 12 months in advance to look at the facility. And I picked up all this stuff, photographed it, and fetched it back home. Like. Nice. And how can, what can we add and change? And then in the end, obviously, we, we, had, and, uh, we started winning all these Grand Slams. And I always remember Roger Lewis 
he'd see me coming after a grand slam and then, oh, Yuri, come, what do you want now? I said, oh, we want a new gym. How much? Three quarters of a million. You must be joking. I said, I know how much extra money you're having for winning a grand slam. He said, <laughs> no, I said, Roger, what do you want to be remembered for now when you leave this job? Yeah. I tell you what you'll be remembered. Not how many millions is in the bank because somebody will spend that after you've gone anyway. Mm. I said to him, like, this is about having the best facilities for our young men and girls, I said. Mm. But, and our under 18s, under 20s, they come into a centre of excellence. And the minute they walk in there, they think, oh, wow, I want to come back here. Yeah. I want to train hard. I want to I wanna, I wanna be successful. Because the facilities, see, excellent sporting facilities demand excellent performances eventually. Yeah, well, and that's part of And that's what we got. Uh, and uh, I take a lot of pride out of that. Uh, but going back to the job, learn you learn a lot on the yeah. job. You learn about the, the characters of people, uh, uh, well, one player, you know, reacts to this and that, and you can be, you know, shoulder for him and mm. advice to him. And uh, what do you say to somebody, you know, like who's played for Wales on a Saturday and I'm played very well, and all his family is there watching yeah. it? You don't need to tell that boy anything. He knows. Everybody knows who plays rugby or any sport. They know when they've done well yeah. and when they haven't done well. And it's not through a lack of effort sometimes. Mm. You know, uh, it's like it just doesn't run you away. Some games. No. You make a mistake, you know, and they score a try. And uh, that's the difference between winning and losing. Somebody's got to make a mistake. Of course. Otherwise, you wouldn't have people scoring tries. Exactly. Uh, somebody's got to give away a penalty. Or there's a stupid penalties on their penalty sometimes. I remember in the World Cup, referee penalised Alan Wynn in the semi final against Alan. It was never a penalty. Mm. The South African bloke was conning it. And yeah. that was the difference. 19 16, and we were 16 all. Yeah. Going into the last six or seven minutes, and I always felt. We'll beat these now because mm. we were a fit team, strong team, and they knew it. Yeah, and they they pushed the game off us, you know. So, I, but it, you learn all these things as you go on, yeah. and the job. And like, I go back to sorry, I you know gone on a bit, but it's fine. Now. No. I remember the, the the biggest panic I ever had when we were in Sapphire Gardens, and the bus didn't turn up in the afternoon to take us back. And I was ringing the bus company, and oh, uh, we don't know where the driver is. He had gone off somewhere. In a labour, I had a kip and I'd walk up like, and but that was the right, third right. I always wanted. I didn't rate this bus company at the time, but I was told, "Oh, we got to have, we got to have them because they were cheap, right?" That's when I got Edwards buses in then, and they still there now, and they were fantastic. Mm. There's a driver for Edwards buses, Andy. He's worth his weight in gold. Every, he ships. He goes in front of the team now when we go to Scotland, Ireland, wow. and uh, France, and he'll take all the gear, all your suit carriers, and when you get to France. Your suit carries on your up in your wardrobe. Mm. Your kit bags in your room. He's done it all. Oh, he's unbelievable. I, and so a bus driver, I always try to, all the staff are so important. Like, yeah. if you want to find out about uh, how the players' mood is and how they are, best boys are the physios. Yeah, Every yeah. morning. We had Mark Davis, a uh, carcass, my steak boy, right? Character, right? They confide in him and everything. Yeah. If Even about their personal life. Yeah. Well, he'd fill the back, say, listen, you say something. Uh, so and so's a bit down, blah 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 blah. Mm. Right, and I go and chat to Warren. I say, listen, right, okay. Uh, somebody's at home, baby's not very well. You got the, oh, the other thing was boys then. We got an old there. They're having children. Yeah. It'd be something at home. The wife's finding it a bit tough. Send them home for a couple of days. Well, this is what we do. But it all fed from physio beds. Amazing, because the boys talk, talk, open up to them. So they can rub down for an hour. Well, That's in the morning, every all of them are having a massage in the morning yeah. before training or after training, yeah. you know, in the evening. Well, these boys are there open up. Mm. You know, and so we, the information we had from the physio department was fantastic. Yeah. And we could react then and help them. And Warren sent them home. And you, you imagine what that boy was like. He had a couple of days at home. Everything's calm at home. Yeah. And that's the big thing we did. If if it's not calm at home, his, his mind isn't on playing for Wales on Saturday. No. Nah. If, if things are not quite right at home through illnesses or whatever, right? Yeah. Mother's not very well, you know, and and, we used to, and then boys come back in and they're different men. Yeah. They'll give it back to you in space. Like. That's the way. And I think and that's... Yeah. That's about learning with people. See, people skills, understanding people, who's the, uh, you know, chopsy ones and who's the quiet ones and who's this and who's that, like, you know, and... Um, who's been the chopsy ones over the time? Oh, there's plenty of them. <laughs> Don't worry. They didn't let me... They won't chop you for long because they got out chops. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd be curious to see how long they chops for. Well, they, 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 a lot of them laugh at me. See, I used to come up with these old sayings. So I'm like, he said, I'm, I said, listen, yeah, boys, now I'm too old a cat to be mucked about by kittens. <laughs> 
and he laughs, see, <laughs> and defuse it, and they laugh. We'll have some banter with him, you know. Like, That's and, the way. Uh, all he's always used to say to him, hey, boys, God give you two ears and one mouth. Why is that? He wants you to listen more and talk less. Yeah. Listening is education, you know. Listen to what the coaches want you to do. Listen to what everybody wants you to do, and you'll be fine. Like, what was your favourite year, Al? Oh, there's lots of every time you won a Grand Slam. Mm. World Cups. Four Grand Slams? Yeah, I won on five World Cups. That was great. Yeah. You know, the World Cups were unbelievable. The one I love to watch out, I know it was, it, it was as if there was a spat. It was Steve Anson, I believe, was the World Cup where Shane Williams come. Oh, yeah. Against, the, oh, yeah. And England. it was like the, the, the you know, the, the, the era of Shane just come oh, through then. Unbelievable, mate. When um, that. You know, if you ever ask me, everybody asks me about this, and I even make my grandson watch Shane now, because uh, all night he's on doing all these things. Say, hey, just have a look at Shane Williams, best of Shane Williams. And he saw first time he saw that, he went, "Wow, Dad, look, not a big guy. You don't no. have to be a big guy," I said. But you know, when you think what he done, right? Yeah. Uh, Steve Vance left him out because he wasn't strong. He was too weak, right? And in contact, he was losing the ball, getting bumped about in the tackle. In the end. Pound for pound, mm. Shane Williams is the strongest player in our team. Wow. And he'd done all these jump tests, all these, uh, pound for pound, he was stronger than all the forwards. Wow. And you see what he what he became like. And that was, that, was, that was the guy I would pay money to go and watch. Yeah. And that's the only way I can compliment some of these boys, uh, you know, because he was exceptional. He was. And a, a boy and a half, see, when he had a couple of drinks and him and he said, oh, bloody <laughs> nuisance he was, you know. What was that thing I believe he, he he spoke about it when he had a, he got pretty drunk and had a word with Gatland or something like that? Oh, you asked him to come <laughs> off the bus, me and you off the bus. <laughs> I said, I, he got so I leave him to me. I said, I said Come here, you. <laughs> and the following day, you can imagine him the following day now. Taylor and me. the boys knew, see, all the team knew. Well, you can imagine the morning now. They were giving it to him when he had the bus. <laughs> and he had, and he came over to me and he said, Oh, so don't apologize to me. I said, there's the man you need to go and see. <laughs> Sorry to, if you want to remain in this group of people, I said. Mm. And February was great, and it was all laugh and joke. Yeah, it was laughter then. That's you know? it. Because you knew, hey, his drink was talking. Drink, see, is um, it, it's a character changer. Drink, you know, pe some people when they have a drink, they're just different people. Mm. And I would say to some of the boys over the years, you and drink don't get on. Yeah. Every time you drink, there's an issue with you. Yeah. I suggest now that you. Knock it on the head. Yeah, I'll just moderate it. You know. yeah. And uh, and they did in time. Uh, and, and they listen, you know, young people, they're young, you know, some of the boys over the years have done some stuff. They're young people, you know, young boys and young girls. They make You make mistakes when yeah. you're young, you know. And But as long as they put their hand up with me and we, we've done the right apologies to the right people and we were gracious about it uh, and fixed it, mm. we was fine. But it was what I couldn't take to was the boys would do stuff and they wouldn't own up. They blame somebody else or this. Yeah. Well, they didn't last long. I was going to say you get called up for not owning it. You know, lose, yeah. lose respect as well, right? Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's a thing I learned this in life. You know, you you cannot not just rugby but life in general. You you cannot trust a liar, no, because you can't act on it. You don't know whether it's right or wrong. And, and listen, we had times. Uh, listen. Supporters would send us emails because the WRU were a desk there, email, and they'd send stuff in about players, even when they were playing for Cardiff, uh, the Blues, mm. and what have you. Like, it, all, you know, and the boys, I said, it all reflects on us as well as a national team, you know. And I'd ring the boys up, even if they were, so what's happened there then? And, oh, and then, you know, sometimes the boys were out of order. Yeah. There are lots of times they weren't because they wouldn't sign an autograph mm. or have a photograph with a girl. The girls take umbrage with it. Well, you know, I got it because some of the boys would say, well, I'm wrong, we, we're caught in. we got wives and girls. We can't be seen to be having a life or we have gorgeous-looking girls you know, with hardly any clothes on type of mm. thing. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, they get murders at home. Oh, you know, the wives, the girlfriends go, well, who's that girl you had a photograph with? You know, and all this. So I got it when I, I mm. when we talked to the players. I got that. Mm. And I said, well, you've, you've got to do, boys, you've got to. I said, right, so what do we do about this? I said, will you explain to the girls, listen, I just got a new, beautiful, fantastic girlfriend. She wouldn't like it if I had a photograph. Yeah. Obviously. And, you know, I'm doing really well. I'm getting on really well. We, 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 and if you went that road, I, the girls will understand. Like, yeah. Just don't brush people off no. and say no. You know, like, and always 
give time to people. Yeah. Because these are the people that buy the jerseys, buy the tickets in the future, I said. And you know, you only need one person to be very unhappy with a certain player. They'll go and tell ten people for you know, there's hundred people saying, Oh, so and so is not a very nice person. Mm. On the other hand, if you do a good deed, ten people tell ten people, Well, what a great boy he is. Yeah. Well, and it's quite easy to fix and flip. You know. Yeah. Just need a bit of a discipline, but repeat your things to him, you know. Mm. One thing I want to ask you, Al, and I totally agree with everything you just said then regarding, you know, dismissing, not dismissing, but, you know, <coughs> sorting out situations like that. That era, you mentioned a little bit about it before when Graham Henry, then Steve Hansen, then Mike Rudder kick in. I, I'm a big fan of Alfie. I like him a lot. And like you said, is he wears his heart in his sleeve. He yeah. probably says, you know, not everyone will have, will have Vouch for him, but some I I like him because he speaks what he thinks and he's, he'll he'll do best of the team. But that era of Mike Ruddock, remember that time of Scrum Five? That was probably I don't know if they chucked him under the bus or they put him in a vulnerable position, but it didn't. You know, it, I don't think it did well for him. <coughs> There's all sorts of stuff like um, that went on there, and some of it like I, I I don't I knew everything that went on, like so I I I I could be the best judge of that mm. and some of the stuff that went on. Uh, you don't know about public no. don't know about and uh, he was very passionate about it player thing and things that was going on about the team where under Steve Anson we were improving and uh, and he didn't think you know things were the right thing and um, you know there was things went on really you come very very close to a player's re uh, revolt there really mm. and um, so you know you know what do you add with Alfie and that's what I liked about Alfie he said it as it was. No, you didn't have to agree, and some of it wasn't right. But most of the time, I knew and on that he was passionate about the team, whether it was Bridgend uh, uh, or you know, or Wales or, or Cardiff, like and and I prefer players like that. Say it as it is, not the ones that go around moaning about everything to every and dragging everybody down. Mm. I've said it as it was, and uh, you can't ask him more than that. There were tough times, I was. Mm. It was tough times for everybody. Uh, but we come through it, yes. and we got better, and uh, as we went on to win everything, and um, that's the way it was. It was a good transition, to be fair, from, you know, they were, like you just said, there were tough times. Um, well, they got fit, see. The first thing, Steve Anson is still, you know, you've got to be fit. Warren Gartner is massive on fitness. Warren yeah. Because he always says, there's no skill, skill required to get fit. No. And especially with all the help and support you got now, uh, about, you know, nutrition and everything, recovery. Recovery mm. is massive now, right? I, I became massive for us, recovery. Cryotherapy chambers, cold, freezing cold baths, uh, plenty of protein, when to eat, when not to eat, and all this sort of stuff. When to eat it, when not to eat it. Like players come down in the morning, they weigh every morning when they come down. Their weight's dropping down. They're questioning, are, are, you, eat, why, are you not eating enough food? Are you not doing this? Mm. And hydration. You can te we test that, uh, you know, because massive, you've got to be hydrated, otherwise you start pulling muscles in training. Yeah, yeah. Train them so hard, you know, that, what we've done. And, uh, and Warren, massive. And Warren, I know many times I heard this, uh, we'd be in a big game, tough game, and he'd say, boys, we're in this, so 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago, we'll win it. Mm. You know, uh, and many times, 10 9 against England half time, and next we were on 32 points. And every time he said it, we won. Wow. Because he knew that we were fitter mm. than most teams. <coughs> pound for pound, we were as strong as anybody. Yeah. I mean, Tussles, we had South Africa and beat them and got yeah. close physically. They didn't, they, they res South Africa respected us more than most teams because they knew when they were playing against the Welsh, they could knock you down, but we'd bounce back up and come at them again, you know. And uh, Warren, I said, and we did. And unfortunately, this, the problem we're having at the moment with this new Welsh team is that they're all young, uh, and physically they know uh, they're not there yet. And if mm. you notice, we're losing games in the last fifteen minutes. Uh, we, we we've, we're bouncing off them because we haven't got this physicality yet. We need to take them on, mm. and that'll come because yeah. this team is going to need twenty-five games. International, international. You need about 20, 25 to experience everything international rugby can throw at you. Mm. Every every angle, every trip, every country you go to. Once they've got all that in the locker and we've got them physically stronger, we'll come good again. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's going to be a tough 12, 18 months perhaps, you know. You know, they may come with some good rugby players there, you know. Yeah, definitely. Good rugby players there. And, 
you know, uh, I'm mightily impressed with Dewey, okay? Yeah, Jack Morgan. Yeah. You know, they bolt on lions for me. And there'll be others that'll come through now in the next 12 months. Mm. Tap the door, you know? So, um, but we just need to be patient now because, like, you think we've lost, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 players yeah. in the last 30 months. 50 clap, 50 cap plus players. Yeah. Tough, tough players. Mm. You know, really tough. And, you know, we talk about tough players. One of the toughest boys, aren't I? Oh, I loved him, mate. I sort of will of him. Uh, and what a great guy. You're Josh Navidi, right? Yeah, he's great, Josh. Oh, he, he was tough. And he won't big, big guys, but, oh, he was tough. Mm. Steve Hansen said to me when we played the All Blacks once, he said, who's that book, Navidi? He said, well, oof, he's giving us some trouble today. Even the boys are talking about him in the changing rooms. Wow. You know, and I, I, you don't get a better compliment That's a compliment. That. That's, That's a com- in itself. Yeah. That's you. Itself. You had some players, man. Like, like you said, that that last World Cup, I think was, you know, there was a lot of boys that pulled by, pulled out of that World Cup. You know, retirement injuries. You know, there's been a lot of things. You, know, I think Alan Wynn, did he miss out? On, did he not play yeah, that World yeah. Cup? Well, you can't, you can't replace that. You see, you cannot replace that experience. Mm. Alan Wynn, Andrew Norcaps, what a warrior he been for Wales. Unbelievable, like, and uh, there's loads of, and then you think. You know, out at Warby, Warby, and uh, you can keep naming them out. There's, we've had some great players there. Yeah. And who are recognised better outside Wales than in Wales, perhaps sometimes. Because we take things for granted when you win in all these Grand Slams, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, you just can't replace that intel, experience, mm. and physicality, because they are tough. They're yeah. strong. You know, you know like Sam Warburton, no, well, Sam, right? We... we we had to feed him so much to get him up to the weight he needed. Like, he, he's 10 kgs, playing weight was 10 kgs heavier than his natural weight. His body, natural body weight. He had to eat so much chicken. Uh, like, you could, you, you made a couple of quid supplying him with chicken, right? Because I said, he's eating chicken all the time and proteins. And he had to eat five times, a, yeah. five times a day when we had him in. And every time he came into the squad, they try and bulk him up about two weeks before squads, you know, start eating more, you know. It's fair play to him, but... The <laughs> That was the, that World Cup you're on about there with Sam Warburton. Then he got that red card in the semis. Was the semis? We'd have won that World Cup. Yes. I'm convinced we'd have won that World Cup because we played rugby in that World Cup that was the best out of yeah. all the World Cups I've ever seen us play. Uh, we play, I remember playing, uh, who did we play? The t- they've been giving us trouble for, for years. They had the South Sea Island team, Samoa. Samoa, yeah, yeah. And we beat them. Well, you know, it was the toughest game I've ever seen us play. Mm. And we come through it, and I thought, well, I remember Warren saying, this is good for us now. This, this yeah. is set us up. This, this, the conditioning of that game mm. and the winning, he said, it set us up. And like, when you look back at that uh, game against France, right, even the Sam sent up, we should have dropped a couple of goals at the end. We yeah. had them on their line, and we bottled out of dropping a goal. We tried to play. Mm. We dropped a goal. We had been in the final. And All Blacks at that time, they, although they won it, they beat France in the final, the All Blacks were struggling under the expectation yeah. of their own team. And they, they, they weren't a great team. No. So I, I thought the way we were playing, mm. that was the closest, I think. I think we were, we were winning a big shot. That was my favourite era. I think the fittest, that was the fittest team I've <coughs> seen, the Welsh team, just like all on the same page. It was just, everything was happening that time. And the way we played as yes, well. Yes, yeah, yeah. The way we played. Uh, but don't forget, then after that, standards lifted everywhere. Fitness got up mm. with other teams. We were good after that as well, mate. Yeah. We knew how to win games after the Grand Slam. It's funny thing to talk about all the Grand Slams. The the final game in all the Grand Slams is the easiest game. Mm. And I find it, I used to find it ironic, really, because you know there were every Grand Slam we won, there were games we could have lost. There was the banana yeah. skins in all them games. Yeah, in that tournament. But when you got to the final, the last game, we just, a wave, the wave, the emotion, and, uh, you know, it, it was just, we were unstoppable. Mm. We had momentum. That's the one word we used to use, Warren used to use on them. We got momentum now, we'll take some beta. Ride the momentum out, yeah. Yeah, and he knew, like, he knew. And it was, he knew how to deal with that team that week, you know, it was... You know, you know, you're talking about those teams and, and you know, we, ha- we've, we haven't spoke about all of the coaches you've worked with, but in particular, like, you had Warren, Rob Howley, Sean Edwards, yourself, and the other backroom staff as well. I'm, I've always been intrigued about Sean Edwards. What is he like as a person, as a coach? Oh, he's... That northern accent. 
oh yeah, he, he's different. And he was one you to handle differently. Mm. You, yeah, yeah, you had to. Like, uh, he was very deep, mm. very tough. If you look at his record, his record in sport, in rugby league, rugby league was second to none. Mm. But he's won. He's won things everywhere he's been, right? And uh, I'm hearing rumours now. I, I know it's the papers talking, but England lost the defence coach. Mm. bit like that in France, so they say, yeah, and I'm not sure. But uh, he's, gr- he's a great guy. Mm. Uh, I loved him, I did. But he w- we used to wear the wrong clothes every <laughs> time he went for training and all this in the end. And he liked his money, see. He <laughs> liked the dough, like he did. like. So <coughs> I'd uh, write, we was a players committee, you know, fines committee. And if a player turned up in the wrong T-shirt, he got 50 quid fine. And all meant to charity at the mm. end of the Six Nations or the summer tour. We always, charities had it. And uh, him was fight, we said, right, I said him for 500. And he changed overnight. <laughs> <laughs> he got fine, fine, for the wrong t shirt. He didn't have the wrong clothes on again. And what we used to do to help him as well, I used to, on our day sheet, we used to send a day sheet out to everybody in the evening and what's happening tomorrow, timings for everything and what they need to wear. We actually put photographs of the kit on it, on the it. colours. <laughs> so he he got he had no excuse like and uh, but uh, great boys loved him yeah he was uh, he was tough yeah and they knew they knew he had their back like, yeah you know and uh, you know it was a loss for us mm. losing him he shouldn't have gone yeah I was gonna say what uh, poor poor management above us uh, in dealing with him on that and then he only wanted he wanted a four year contract and they only offered him two. And France came in after, offering far more money in a four-year contract than he went. And there's people involved in that, and I never forgive him for that, because it was personal. Because people involved in that didn't like him because he's a bit abrupt, you know. Mm. And uh, But that's him. Yeah. I knew you win Grand Slam. Oh, I tell you what, we'd, we'd go somewhere with the team. And the boys would stay in Cardiff, and the management, i take the management and the wives and partners. We'd go to El Prado, El Porto, sorry. Mm. And we'd have a room there and just relax for a couple of hours. So we'd go back to the hotel. He'd be there before us. He'd be there with a big Cuban cigar <laughs> and a bottle of champagne. <laughs> and we'd laugh all night at him, man, because he just, this is the week to celebrate, he said, you know, success. <laughs> uh, somebody, you don't mind, I put it on your, on your bill. I said, don't you worry about it. I said, I just spoken to the treasurer when we left, and I said, hey, we're going to give that bar bill a bit of hammering tonight. Every time the treasurer said, you go for it, my boy. You've earned us a lot of money today. Amazing. Which we haven't budgeted for, you know. We didn't take uh, the mic a lot of it. but No, uh, but... I didn't. I made sure that we get back to the hotel and we'd have the trophies and all those people's in the hotel and families and <coughs> you got to keep eye on some of the some people. Mind they try and book, book stuff over the bar, but I used to sit in the corner by the bar that night. I didn't drink much on uh, Grand Slam, so I used to enjoy a day out on the soaking Sunday. it in all oh, of it. Well, you had to and keep an eye on everybody. You know? Yeah, that's the way. I read the uh, um, Busby, not Busby, Bill Shankly said that. I remember reading a book on Bill Shankly, and that's why I picked up on that from him. Uh, every time they won European Cups on that, he didn't celebrate that night. He just wanted to soak it all in. Soak it all in. And he, sa- he said, I'd celebrate the following day. Amazing. And that's what I, I did. Wow. You know, um, we'll, go, we'll go straight back into, I think, what we were talking about. Um, Sean Edwards, Rob Howley, and Warren Gatlin. A lot of different dynamics there. A lot of different... And, and obviously for yourself, uh, like, you've been a part of this the whole time. You didn't chop or change. That that's a that's a reward in its own. Normally, when t- someone comes in, they bring their own team in, they change things. Yeah, but yeah, obviously well doing something right. Yeah, well, that's what I tell people who try to think, oh, he's a survivor and all this. I listen to all this stuff. Stuff it didn't bother me at all. Um, yeah, and I say to myself, well, they either would do, they don't want to, they? Mm. they always did. And um, you know, what I'm really chuffed about is see Rob Oli back in the fold, local boy, right, taking a lot of stick. Right? But uh, for me, like, you know, people don't realize how good he was, you know, how good he is as well. Because one thing that I admire about Rob, he questions everything. Mm. He'll question things. He doesn't care who it is or what it is, right? And, you know, are we doing this the right way, doing that the right way? And he'd question the players in a, in, in a nice way. Yeah. And some players have come out and, <coughs> and had a go at him uh, some time ago. And, uh, you know, because put pressure on him mm. to improve and you know like and uh, he's come back now and I'm glad to see that he's involved in the under 20s as well because uh, going back in the day when I was there he, he had this list of all young players coming through mm. and he, he kept on to the union he, he kept on to the development where's this boy Why, how is he coming you know and yeah. you know 
he was massive on it, and we went away from that. Yeah. And him coming back now, you know, with you being involved in the twenties, he will want to know where all our 16, 17, and eighteen year olds are. You know, we're losing a lot of boys going over the border, me right? Uh, yes. Education per and you can't blame them and their parents because they get in bursaries and all sorts, swept them with their education, and you know they go to these great rugby colleges. You can't blame them, but he will question all this stuff now, and he will make a difference and. Uh, at the same time, years when Warren was leaving, I said you should go for director of rugby. He'd be an ideal for it because he's a work. He works really hard, right? He's studious and uh, you know everybody's cup of tea because he questions things, right? Mm. Uh, but he, I'm I'm so pleased. The one thing that's made my years to see him back there because he's got so much intel, right? We got Robin McBride in Leinster. Yeah, he's got so so much uh, intel, and he's he should be back here. Yeah. He's the type of guys you want back here either coaching the national team or regional team. And what's his name up in uh, Scotland, defence coach up there? Steve Tandy. Yeah, he's a great guy. Worked with him in the Lions. Really impressed with him. He's up. He's coming up to the Sean, uh, Sean Edwards type of level. He went over to Waratahs as well, right, in Australia? He did. And he, I loved that about him because he went to better himself. Oh, he was great. And, you know, we, we need these boys back in Wales because they care about Wales. They care about the regional game. Mm. You know, when we get these foreign coaches in Wales... Hey, listen, you know, you can be wrong if they're any good. They wouldn't be in Wales. Mm. They'd be somewhere else, wouldn't they? And uh, I, they can never care about Wales as much as these boys do. Yeah, yeah. So you're only out of our game. Yeah, them two boys out of our game. A massive loss to me because they, they care about Wales. We should, we should be trying to get these boys back to Wales, right? Because mm. they're better coaches as well now. I know where Robin McBride is. And I, I'm really impressed with Rob and Robin McBride on the Lions talk. Well, he, since he'd been to Highland, He's gone up a, a notch, and Tandy's gone up a notch as well. And uh, you know, it's good to see Rob back. Definitely. You know, you're talking about earlier. I think you mentioned it. You know, the celebrations after these events. Have you got any stories that you oh, you love to talk about? Yeah, now. Uh, oh, a couple. Of, you know, uh, like uh, we obviously we'd have the you know have the trophies at the function now, and it, I will land you the best driver. I'd say after hey, right, the well, bus is coming back. Where are we going? Get on, get him on the bus. Huh? Get him on the bus. Touch him back to the hotel, the Vale Hotel, all the staff for a full game that night, and also all the fans, mm. or whatever. Right? You know. Well, in the mo- <coughs> in the night, then I said, Randy, right, they finished with all this, yeah. Put him in the boot of my car, put him in the boot of my car, and I was in. And then get up, you know. In the morning, off we go, come, I come home to put call. I'd already lined up my brother now in Cambridge Rugby Club Junior section. We, I said, I got the trophies out. He'd send somebody down to pick him up now. So he'd be down my house, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, you know, well, ten o'clock ish, by the time I got home. Take him up to Kenvigan Rugby Club, all the junior sections that I'm in photographs of him. Finish, yeah, yeah right, right. <coughs> I'm I go to the Prince in Kenvigan for, for afternoon drink in with my mates and what have you. Drop the trophies down the Prince. Monday, the landlord knew it was coming. No, they were coming from everywhere to have photographs <laughs> of the trophies upstairs in the museum. Eh? And the, all these kids were coming in, they watch jerseys, you know. I, I, and I so I tell you, then I get a phone call about two o'clock <laughs> from somebody in the union commercial. Alan, yeah, yeah. We can't find the trophies. Where's the trophies? Scrum five want the trophies. I said, uh, you tell them to send a car down to the Prince of Wales in Kenfig. What? But, yeah, this is where they are. I'm, I'm down to the Prince of Wales in Kenfig with all my mates. Oh, thank God. I was on. Scrum five, I'd have a phone call from Jeff Williams. From Scrum. Where are you, bugger? We've been looking for them everywhere. <laughs> well, you know where they are. Send somebody to get them. And, they, and they'd be on TV then at five o'clock or six o'clock. Or whatever you want to like, you know, and, uh, uh. There was another time then, uh, <laughs> it was a crack, you know, talking about t- people taking the mick out of the bar, like, uh, I won't name the player, don't embarrass him, but he, he had his model girlfriend, <coughs> and we were there and off to one game. Recently or a couple of years? Oh, no, when I was there with the team, and we won a Grand Slam, and, got, and uh, she walked to the bar, and I'd be in the corner, she'd go, champagne, please, uh, three bottles of champagne, you know, okay. and the barman would look at me, and i just, you know, smile, she'd take him, and she said, book him to the WRU. And she only hadn't long come on the scene, like, and then next, so we're not going, I laid up again, another three bottles of champagne. I just nodded, and she went, book him to the WRU. So I went and found out this player's number now, and the room number, and I said to the boys, right, send a bill now for them six bottles of champagne. I went on reception, and when we put under his door tonight, you know, when he goes to bed, put that bill under the door, so in the morning he's got to come and pay it. Well, you can imagine I was weak to this. <laughs> we don't have him breakfast. This player came in. He came storming towards me. And I told a couple of boys, well, here he comes. Look, look at him bear now. And he, 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 he going like this to me. And well, this bill? I said, yeah. What's wrong with the bill? I said, well, you, 
Well, for six bottles of champagne, yeah. Well, your girlfriend ordered six bottles of champagne. Well, I thought it was a free bar. Not champagne is in the free bar, man. Yeah. If, if, if she'd come to me and said, is it okay if you have a couple of bottles of champagne? And then I would have said yes. Yeah, yeah. But to think that this girl has just come into our camp now and she'd go to the bar and order six bottles of champagne and walk away. Is that so you pay this? He's fuming. <laughs> fuming. He's still fuming me the following week. Like, and I never saw him again. But he never done it again. He and that message it. got out to all the players then. Mm. There's a way to do things, you know. Definitely. Yeah, because at the end of the day, as many a times I've had uh, incidents with some family members, and I say to them, listen, I know the only reason you were here now is because of your part player, partner, brother, your brother, uh, or whatever, what have you. So just remember, when you come into this environment, it's very special. Family is, and we love the families being there, but there's a way to behave. Yeah. And you just think that you can't come in there and take the mick, like, you know. No. But once you've done it to one of them, say, the, it was... After that, then the other one I used to do to him, like l flights, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go long all, and coming back now from, I used to fly Emirates, uh, AC80 with the bar, the bar, fabulous, and we have, be like a disco coming back. <coughs> but one or two of the boys become nuisances after a bit, you know. I didn't know when they'd had enough. So I said, right, okay, yeah, we'll have him now. And then uh, I go up now. And Mike Phillips is one of them now, see. So I love Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's great. We haven't spoke much about Mike, but I'd, I'd oh, let you. he was a su super character, trained, hard, very underrated. He's class, well, confident class. bloke, right? Oh, lived in it, backed himself big time, man. And uh, you know, uh, I remember getting on a plane there and uh, in Australia, and that uh, back. He said, uh, "This girl said to him, um, business class, sir.' No, he said, world class." <laughs> <laughs> He says the stewardess, like, and I think he ended up meeting her in London and a month or two later, like, with his elbow boy. <laughs> but it was a boy, you know, always put his hand up. Owned it. Great boy. And you know what? He would go after, you know, in May, we used to send players on rugby clubs, junior sex, all. He'd go everywhere for him. Wow. And say no. There's, there's some would say they'd go in and drop out. He would never let you down. He was wow. cracker. And uh, we'd be honest along our flight now, like, and he's, he, he's annoying, and he'd be, and you know what? He be getting a nuisance now. He get on people's nerves now, right? And uh, <coughs> I go up. Now, I think you're a bit of a drinker, Mike. You come on, let's have a glass of red. Like, you know. Yeah, when I go, but what I done, I uh, had half a sleeping towel. He crushed it and put it in his glass of red. See, <laughs> and I shoved mine down me like this, and he went like, yeah, "Okay, I'll wait to drink." Oh, right, you know. Right, you know. Well, I'm at, you want another one then? Yeah, yeah. Well, you want a bar? Now, let's do the same again now, right? <laughs> Well, ten minutes later, now he'd be standing at the bar. Now, honestly, I've never seen this before. He'd be leaning against the bar, sleeping, <laughs> 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 and the boys be looking at him. Well, so I said, "Hey, he's drinking." With me, I said, "Boys, there we are. You don't drink with something. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a bit of a you know tidy drinker." We'd have been put him in his seat now. When we wouldn't, we, we we had to wake him up in Dubai, like you know. <laughs> and uh, after a few trips, I I made the mistake of telling one of the boys, "Say." And boys are laughing. Well, they were looking out for me after that. Day. <laughs> Watch out for them. Watch out for them. Well, I said, well, you better go to bed now then, innit? Because <laughs> I will have you, like. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and you used to call me some things for doing that to him. That's a good laugh, though. Oh, yeah. He Creative. Was he was a champion, he was. He, he was he was one by, the word character is underestimated when you think of him. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Champ. We we were never short of good scum half, so no. Rob Howley, Gareth Cooper, yeah. Dwayne Peel, Mike Phillips, Reese Webb. You know, even the scum halves you got coming through the roots now. You know, they're good players. You know, Davis, <coughs> uh, the other scum half was oh, just going to be Gar's been a great scum half. Was Gar Davis? You know, the saga with Reese Webb. What are you? What are your thoughts on that? Like, was it a shock? Was it news? I'm, I was pretty gutted to find like well, still it's going always, through. Yeah, it always is a bit of a shock when you hear about uh, a player that's been. Accused, uh, well, have you for taking drugs? But you know, and it's dragging on, and I don't yeah. know what's the outcome really. But they don't generally get these things wrong, uh, mm. you know. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's so easy to do, like you know, because like you got to be very careful, like uh, when you come in, mm. you come into a, a Welsh squad now, and you've got a doping form there. You got to fill it in, and if you suffer with asthma, if you, if you suffer yeah. with something, and you're taking some. Whatever you take, you have to put on the form. Now, <coughs> that stuff on the form, like an inhaler for asthma, no, will fail a drugs test, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you put it on the form that you suffer with asthma, 
and you take this stuff, you're fine. Yeah. You know, so you've got to be very specialised what you say and, and if you're taking stuff, right? Now, <clears throat> there's no excuse otherwise to get done because all these players know now after a bit of time, you know, there's certain things you can do, certain things you can't do. Like, even you have to tell them when you're going on holidays and where you're going away, even mm. off-season. You know, if you're a professional rugby player, they want to know where you are because they can call on you at any time. They can call you any time. You've got to give your own address mm. and you've got to say where you are this week. Every week you fill in a thing. I'll be you, I may be in the gym, you, uh, whatever I am with Cardiff Blues or whatever you are. You have to tell the drug. Yeah. Name. So there's, there's no way to hide really on no. it. On it and it's, it's quite straightforward. You shouldn't pick up mm. stuff. Fingers <coughs> crossed it all comes out and he gets all the clear. Hope to God. No. Well, you know, yeah, but it's dragging on a bit. Yeah, yeah, it is dragging on. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to ask you for a shame, questions. really, because uh, he's gone out there at the right time. He had a great, he had played well for Wales. Ospreys obviously didn't, uh, the, the, what I understand, the, the, the contract Ospreys offered him was peanuts. And he got picked up over there, and he would have had a nice couple of years over there to finish his career. He was a good player as well. Really he was a good player. British yeah. Lion. You, know, you was player. a part of that. Was you a part of that one? No, that no, trip? no he, he was a good player. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Oh, he's a cracking player. I want to ask you a few questions. Um, like to wrap it up anyway, Al. I've, be, I've really enjoyed this today. You've, <laughs> you've got some stories, and I, I could tell you're, a, you're, you're respectful as well. You look after them boys and the coaching staff, and that's part of it as well, you know. Well, that is, yes. Yeah, I bet you could have wrote a book if you wanted to. Well, that's I, uh, a few years ago, I was asked by a couple of people, but I said, no, no, I know too much, really. Hmm. No, and I'd rather not. Well, what for? Like 15, 20 grand? Whatever it is, and you, you, they want you to come out with stuff that, uh, some stuff you got to keep yeah. indoors. Like, really. mm. Who was your top three players that you, you know, wouldn't say the best players, but three people that you just warm to the most? Uh, Welsh players? Yeah. <coughs> well, it's a bit difficult to say pick out three because a lot of them, uh, you know, like um, stood out to me, like like a chain of excitement, and uh, you know, like he, he was quite incredible. You know, um, but there's a lot of good boys we've had. Like I like, you know, like Alan Wynn was mm. fucking world class. You know, like Orby was up there. Different characters, yeah, completely different characters. You know, uh, you you had a really cajole Bobby to have a drink when you won a Grand Slam, like you know, and uh, you know, what's another uh, some players wise. I like uh, I like Josh Navidi. Yeah, I like them. His attitude was good. Hardest worker, who would you be? Gar Davis is very good. Mickey it's come Phillips, off. Mikey Phillips. Mike Phillips, well. Yeah, Shane. Shane, Shane Williams. Uh, there's a lot of them who worked hard, man. You know, they are too, you know, like, you know. Mm. You could go on about him. Dan Lilliet was a great boy. Yeah. There's, there's lots of them that, uh, you know, that wouldn't be fair to just pick a few, really, because... Uh, yeah. They were all different, weren't they? You know, like lo- all trained hard. They had to, you know, to you know, to get there, you know, and uh, mm. Ken Owens a champion. Yeah. Champion bloke. The sheriff. Sheriff. T man. <coughs> and he was the one that averted the drama we had last year on the strike strike thing. The players want to go on strike and it was uh, down to him to to nip that one in the bed, you know. Mm. And, uh, how much he thinks of Wales uh, and it was great for him at the end of his career to play for the Lions and Test series and because he wore his heart and sleep. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Tell her. Ah, oh, fair play to you, man. An absolute pleasure to have you on. The last question I'm going to ask you is, and this could be personal or anything, what was the hardest thing you had to do mentally? The hardest thing? Well, if you were enjoying the job, nothing it was hard about mm. it. You know, some things. Planning ahead, you had to plan ahead all the time and go into battle with the uh, Rugby World Cup uh, committees. Uh, uh, Trying to get the best for the team. There's nothing really hard, really. You know, is no, it's nothing. I didn't find the job hard. Uh, going back to the the di- the time with Alfie, you know, that was tough. Mm. That was really tough. I learned a lot from that, and how to deal with things differently uh, after that, to avoid anything like that ever happening again. You know. Uh, how do you deal with the buggy system then? The, s- the buggy situation. Yeah. Well. Um, that was disappointing. That was that wasn't hard because everybody found it funny. Not but the nurse who was driving to work at half past five in the morning and nearly run them off the road. Oh, well, I didn't and know she that. She swerved and, and went on the gravel in the central reservation. She didn't find it very funny. Mm. 
And so there could have been a very tragic outcome to that, where people thought it was funny. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, as it turned out, Andy never played for Wales again after that. But, you know, a lot of people just found it funny. But I certainly didn't. Uh, <coughs> I knew what happened that day, you know. Uh, but it, we dealt with it pretty yeah. quickly. And uh, that would be further on in our careers. And we knew how to deal with things like that then. Yeah, yeah. There's certain things you can get away with and, uh, <coughs> you know, stand to fight your ground again. But there's some things you can't do. Mm. Mate, Al, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, mate. I really enjoyed it. Thank Some you. stories, I'm sure there's many, many more, but um, absolute pleasure having you on. One question, one question I always ask my guests, mate, is just what are you grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for uh, a great wife, great kids, a great career, a great life. I have, I have no complaints whatsoever. There's nothing left on the table for me, really. If if he, uh, if he decides to give me a call tomorrow, I go up there happy as time bears, like because I... I I've been lucky. I wow. managed to work, play, play, right, and work in an environment that I love. Mm. And uh, you know, and I had a fair amount of success, been involved in a successful team. More importantly, meeting some great people, uh, or friends. I'm going to Argentina now, at Christmas for a month, meeting some friends over there, I, you know, like I got friends in New Zealand, Australia, all through rugby. Amazing. It's been amazing. Rugby's an amazing sport. It's travel, you know, and where you get to go is a very, very lucky way. Yeah. Absolute pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Right, so we let's go and have a cup of coffee. Just talking, walking.